So guys, what we're seeing is finally a bullish day for crypto, which is great to see. Um, we are moving slightly in the right direction. However, we are still vulnerable to moving down again. And we'll be talking about Bitcoin and Ethereum, the key levels, as well as a couple of news articles in there to keep everything interesting as well. If that all sounds good, leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and let's get straight into it. Enjoy. So guys, for once we can actually say the market is up and uh, that is nice to see a little bit of percentage gain up about 3.74, almost 4% on the day. That is almost back at $2 trillion of market cap, which is good to see a little bit of a healthy rise. Um, I don't think we're out of the woods yet, just so we, we are clear on that. I don't think we are going to be rushing back up to 60, 70K anytime soon. However, I do think we are showing signs of progressing in the right direction. I'll be breaking that all down with analysis in a second, but let's take a look at the market. The market, Bitcoin dominance is at 40.2%. We've got Ethereum at 19.1% and we have Bitcoin's price back over 42K. We've got Ethereum back over 3.1K, almost at 3.2K, but Ethereum has taken a huge hit. Um, and so has my portfolio with Ethereum being the biggest holding. But 16% uh, down on the week is not ideal for any stretch of the imagination. But if we take a look at the biggest gainers on the week, we still have a few ICP, Chainlink, Harmony, uh, Cosmos, all up decent amounts. So we've got biggest gainers on the day. We've got ICP being one of them, Chainlink again being one of them, Terra doing quite well, up 15%, trying to regain its gains that it lost previously. And uh, we also do have some losers down, you know, 1% to 6%. But on the week, the biggest losers are Gala, Cardina, Loopring, etc. All down about 24-25%. So, you know, there is a mix of things to take a look at on the week. However, for the day, this is a good day for crypto. Now, if we take a look at the fear and greed index, we've got extreme fear being shown at 23 yesterday we were extreme fear of 10 which is insane i don't think we've been that low in a while um that shows how scared people are to even put a single cent into crypto but again when i see areas like this i see people getting scared that's when i want to put my money in because you know you can guarantee that institutions are going to be buying right now and we've, we've seen that you know micro strategy purchased more bitcoin uh we've seen other institutions probably following suit so it is interesting to see how the retail mindset works versus the institutional mindset. And, uh, you know, they are doing what they're doing for a reason. So if we take a look here, you can see Bitcoin stabilized at around 41K on Friday and down about 9% over the past week. And uh, we, have pot we have potential further declines if technical support levels are breached. Now, again, I'll be going over my own analysis in just a second. Um, but we also have this thing about traders reducing risk, which is very interesting to see. So some analysts are pointing to signs of stabilization in crypto markets following Wednesday's sell-off because $800 million in liquidations occurred during the price dip. And this is actually something we've seen on our own accounts in Bybit and stuff like that. You can see less people are trading with as much leverage right now because of the volatile times. And this is something we've been telling our subscribers to do for the past few days now is, you know, be careful in these volatile times. Yes, you can make great money uh, doing great swings. However, it's so risky and it's so fundamentally driven right now that uh, you never know what's going to happen. So I would be very, very careful when it comes to it. Um, if all, if you do want to really risk it, then, you know, there is the Bybit link down in the description. Take a look at that. You can get some free trades with some deposit links. But at the same time, do make sure you know what you're doing because this is not a game for people that don't know what they're doing, especially in volatile times like this. Um, but potentially people reducing their risk on these leverage positions is actually leading to the stability of Bitcoin and we're not seeing as much liquidation happening. Now we've also got here PayPal is exploring creating its own stable coin as crypto business grows. I've seen a few people seen a few people talking about this recently and this is very interesting because we do have a lot of other coins out there that are doing similar things and uh, you know stable coins are one of those things that I really enjoy. I, I like the fact that you can have money in cryptocurrency however you don't have to have it exposed to volatility. So for me, something like USDC is fantastic. And you can also stake it on uh, on places such as Swissbook, for example. So, uh, you know, this is a really nice way to make that passive income. So they're exploring a stable coin. If and when they seek to move forward, they will work closely with relevant regulators. So interesting to see a big player like PayPal coming in. And uh, I will be very interested to see how this plays out. Now, let's get onto the charts. Now, this looks like an absolute mess of a chart. I'm aware of that but we're going to break it down step by step and turn off each indicator and go through them. So first of all, let's go through the price action analysis. The first bit is if we zoom out on the daily chart on Bitcoin, you can see we're still in an uptrend. So that is a good sign. That means overall there is a bullish nature to the market. And as long as we do not break below $29,000, 
that is still an uptrend. Now, or there is a shorter term uptrend as well. As long as we don't break down below 39,500, then we're still in an even shorter term uptrend, which is doubly bullish. However, if we zoom in even more, you can see the price action since you know pretty much the beginning of November has been relatively bearish. So that's also something we have to take into account when hitting these key levels. However, we do have this level of demand that is holding relatively well right now. Now, unfortunately, we are not showing the level of buying of buying pressure I wanted to see from this area. Um, you can see here when Bitcoin previously has hit an, an area of demand, uh, it has shown great buying potential with you know big bullish candles and then following a big, big move. However, here we've come and hit this level and we've barely seen any buying pressure. So for me, this is not a strong sign and we are vulnerable to dropping further. I do think the lower leg will be around $37,000 if we do see another further drop. The absolute worst case scenario that I can see right now is a drop down to 31, 32,000. However, I'd be very, very surprised to see that just yet or at all. Um, but I really couldn't see us going down lower than that. If we did, obviously we can reanalyze re the market, but that is just what I'm thinking right now. Anyway, if we take that off for a second and we slap on the exponential moving averages we have the 5220 we can see we're coming down for a bearish crossover now this is something that uh, you know a lot of people say is quite an important thing especially on the daily chart uh, because you know when we've seen crossovers in the past it usually leads to big uh, either bullish or bearish actions however recently we did see that double crossover and you know price pretty much stayed stagnant before moving back up again so for me I'm not too worried about that just based on that alone. However, there is another indicator that we use on this channel called the Pivot Point Super Trend Indicator. You can find it free on TradingView. And uh, it's done very, very well on the daily chart at predicting when to buy and when to sell. You can see here in the past, pretty much every single time it said buy, a bar maybe one or two times, it's, it's led to a pretty nice run up. You know, if we just bought Bitcoin every time it said to buy Bitcoin, we'd probably be in nice profit here. And then we just sold when it said sell, we would have missed out on this sell, this sell here. So that's that's a pretty good indicator in my opinion. You know, it's got a couple of, um, you know, not great ones, but overall its win rate seems pretty good. So just following on this alone, to get back to a buy zone, we would have to break above 55,500, which right now seems a long way off. So first of all, we'll take it in baby steps. We need, we wanna break, you know, 48,250. We really wanna break that 52,000 mark as well. Um, but I do want to see us push our way back up here before getting bullish on Bitcoin. So I am officially not going to be buying Bitcoin right now, like actually buying the physical asset until we see a further break to the upside. However, I am still taking trades on it. So right now I am in a trade on Bitcoin on the one hour chart. And the reason I took this is because we saw a break of structure from my area of demand. Um, and so then from that area, I bought in at the uh, at the level of demand on here, stop loss below the low, and the take profit zone is at the next kind of order block up here. Just a, a nice little one to two risk reward ratio, and it's moving quite well. We're now at break even, so I'm gonna move the risk that on that trade so we have no more risk, and I'm just gonna hopefully let it hit take profit. So that's Bitcoin. That's what I'm seeing right now. If we go down to Ethereum as well, uh, we have a pretty similar situation. We've seen breakdown, 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 constant breakdowns. We're now hitting this area of demand here. And if we go to the uh, one hour chart, we are seeing a similar thing to Bitcoin. However, we've seen no major break of structure. I do want to break 3,245 before I'd even consider taking a trade here. But right now, you know, we are seeing some nice price action to the upside. We've seen that move one, two, three, move upwards, showing a potential uptrend forming. Uh, but again, I'm not holding my breath when it comes to Bitcoin and Ethereum just yet. We could still see further down potential. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel for more, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye. Mm -hmm.